We're here in the Pitt Rivers and we're surrounded by canoes. I've got canoes above me, canoes in the case here, canoes behind me. And I always thought it would be lovely if we could do a project in the museum making canoes. Not models like these, which were commissioned by collectors, but a full-size canoe, something people can make in the museum and then take the canoe away with them. On the first day, we mark out where we're going to put the stitches and prepare salvage scrap, copper wire, which is what we use to tie it all together. We use copper because it's easy to twist, but it's actually quite strong. Day two, we're actually tightening up all of the copper ties and it pulls the shape together. We have to overlap two pieces of plywood tie them into place and then cut them and then re-tie them. Once we've done that, we're ready for the epoxy. You do the inside of the canoe first and then lay a four inch section of fiberglass tape into the wet epoxy. The actual epoxy is stronger than the wood it's joining. So you've got a very, very tough joint which takes all the pressure off the stitches. It's a lovely log raft there. You know, if that was a real boat, it would be huge. It would be as big as it probably is This one is from British Guiana, so it's South American, and it's the essence of the form, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. And the other two are from North America. They're from the east coast of North America. Um, this one is Eastern Algonquin or, or Maliseet, and this one is probably Mi'kmaq. Mi'kmaq. Um, so both east coast. And this one is from people who spend a lot of time on the ocean, which affects the, the shape of it. Whereas this one is from people who spend most of their time inland on lakes and rivers. So to take a piece of birch bark off a tree that's long enough to make a full size one of these, you need a big, big, big tree. tree. But if you really know your trees and you're really watching the weather and you're, and you're doing a bit of checking, you can just cut one circle at the top, one circle at the bottom, and. A, and slit all the way down and the bark just pops off. Now we're on to day three and the amazing thing is you actually have a boat in front of you. On your work table what was a flat sheet of wood is now a boat shape, it's recognisable. And we have to repeat the process with the epoxy. So we go over the whole surface, all the seams, all the drill holes and backfill with this wood filler. Day four, it's the final day of our workshop in the annex. All boats have a, a strip of wood around the top edge called a gunnel. This strip of wood holds the boat in shape. It gives it its final rigidity. It's a very strong, very lightweight, and in this case, absolutely tiny little canoe.